You are listening to Behind the Numbers from Calamos Wealth Management, the podcast where our investment professionals get behind the statistics that drive the markets. Calamos Wealth Management is a registered investment advisor. Statements made on the program are not investment advice. Opinions expressed on the program are those of the participants and not Calamos Wealth Management. Positions mentioned in the program may be held in client portfolios. I'm Fraser Rice, Senior Wealth Strategist, and joining us today is Michael Kassab, the Chief Investment Officer of Calamos Wealth Management. Well, Mike, the markets have been really active in the last quarter or so. Can you help walk us through what happened in the first quarter? Sure. You know, it really has been a really strong start to the year for, for virtually all global financial assets. Uh, you name it, and it's, and it's seemingly been up. U.S. equities, international equities, emerging markets. Uh, even on the fixed income side, U.S. Treasuries, corporate bonds have all had a s- strong start to the year. Um, that really stands in pretty stark contrast to the fourth quarter of, of last year, where fears of, of slowing global growth and tighter than expected U.S. monetary policy essentially triggered a, a pretty sharp sell-off in risk assets across the globe. Uh, but when you add it all together, the S&P uh, sits right around 2,900 again, uh, which is where it was back in early October before all the fun broke out. Uh, so essentially, over the past six months, the markets have sold off and rebounded and added all together, and we're pretty much back where we were. Uh, but a lot has changed, uh, and, and, and the landscape has really sh- shifted in a significant way over that time frame. Can you help investors understand what triggered the rebound in the first quarter? Uh, sure. Well, well, first of all, the, 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 the sell-off really was triggered initially by a uh, combination of, of concerns over global growth. You started to have some data soften in the, in the third and fourth quarter of last year in the U.S., but primarily also overseas. Uh, and when you couple that with what the Federal Reserve was doing on their end, uh, seemingly uh, raising and hiking rates uh, every quarter on, <laughs> um, as they've indicated, but really by the time you got to la- late last summer, there were kind of growing calls for the Fed to maybe start to, to pause at their rate hikes. Uh, and, and, you know, essentially back in September and December, uh, Fed Chairman Powell continued, hiked rates, uh, and really gave indications that there was really no end in sight. Uh, and that, that um, the markets didn't handle that news very well. And it's important to remember that, that Chairman Powell is still, at that time, was relatively new in that position. Uh, perhaps a little tone deaf uh, when it came to his press conferences. Um, and, you know, I think he quickly learned because early in, uh, in January, he was at a, uh, an economic forum. He was flanked by his two predecessors. And lo and behold, he, he made sort of a, a really sharp and dramatic shift towards a more dovish stance uh, where he essentially called off future rate hikes uh, said the Fed would be very patient with its approach going forward, and the markets have really never looked back since. They've really uh, uh, celebrated that news, and, and here we are uh, with the markets up 14% on the year um, and looking forward to, to from there. So essentially, we come to a point where investors are probably looking at a steep, uh, steep increase in stock prices, uh, a nice little run as it relates to the equity markets generally. What are the data points investors should be focusing on, and what are you looking at in the, in the coming quarters uh, as you try to help clients sort of navigate this uncertainty? Well, you know, we, we look very closely at a number of statistics, both domestically in the U.S. as well as overseas. Um, and right now, after a somewhat of a soft patch on the consumer uh, side in the U.S., it does look like we're getting a, a rebound in some sentiment data, uh, which should help drive the consumer. And at the end of the day, the U.S. consumer is in a pretty good spot. It's pretty healthy. Uh, you look at all the unemployment data that's come out. Uh, we average about 180,000 new jobs per month during the first quarter. Unemployment rate is still below 4%. You've had wage growth of greater than 3% for each of the last seven or eight months. So the U.S. consumer is in pretty good shape. Um, and after a, a little bit of a down, um, a little bit of a dip in U.S. manufacturing data, that's also been on the mend. Uh, if you look overseas, it's not as bright of a picture. Uh, in Germany and France, you, you had manufacturing data come out in the last month or so. That's just not that encouraging. Uh, but I think the biggest um, eyes are on China. Um, and we, we need to see that they're turning a corner, and I think they are. We, the latest set of, of economic news that came out of there seems that 
um, you know, some of the policies that their government is putting into place to support the economy is, are working. Uh, and that ought to bleed through the, the rest of the uh, global economy and, and hopefully have us on the mend in the second half of 2019. How do you uh, view inflation uh, and how should investors be thinking about that? Well, for now, inflation really just remains fairly contained. Uh, you know, I think it's um, it's fairly benign. That's part of the story and part of the reason why equities have been been working. Uh, you've had rates uh, over the last three months really go from uh, you had the U.S. Treasury sitting at over three percent for most of the back half of 2018. Now we're back under two and a half percent. A lot of that has to do with, of course, what Fed might do going forward with their rate hikes and potentially cutting. But that also is a reflection of fairly benign inflation, uh, and that helps stocks. Uh, that all gets added to the equation. For those investors that are looking at income as something that's important to them, are there other considerations we'd be, we should be looking at, whether it's interest rate hikes or lack thereof, or any other statistics we're, that you're focusing on? Well, you mentioned rate hikes, so let's just go there. Interestingly, we're sitting at the point now where, uh, you know, if you go back three, four months ago, uh, Fed Chairman Powell was still projecting another two, maybe even three rate hikes for 2019. We're at the point now where uh, they're all off the table. And in fact, the market's implying that perhaps one or two rate cuts will come in by this time next year. And so I don't think rates are going to go higher from here. I think you, you've got a, a good lid on both short-term and long-term rates uh, at this juncture. And so uh, with that, of course, you go back to, to anywhere you can get income becomes more attractive because you're not able to get it really on the fixed income side. So we've gone through sort of the big four, which is uh, the inflation numbers, the possibility of interest rate hikes, uh, consumer sentiment, and uh, international components like Europe and China. Is there anything else we should be paying attention to from the statistics side of things? Well, not so much on the statistics front, but I think just in generally, um, obviously, we're sitting here coming up on the middle of 2019. The election, uh, presidential election, is is still a ways off. But um, one thing that we're tracking closely is sort of some of the policy proposals that we'll start to get coming in as as the uh, as the as the election you know heats up a bit. Uh, that is always something that could drive the markets, particularly probably in the back half of this year and into early next year. Um, and so uh, that's, that's always something to keep in the back of the head. Michael, thanks for being on and helping investors make sense of the uncertainty in the markets. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Behind the Numbers with Calamos Wealth Management. Look forward to future programming on calamos.com backslash WM.